This is my first hand-bound watercolor journal. Uh, it dates back from a few months ago. And this is using the Coptic Stitch Binding. And I like it enough. It's nice to have a journal. I prefer that. I like to keep my watercolors in one handy place. And I like to flip through a journal. The downside of this is that when a journal is bound like this, well, there's always a bad side to the paper. So you kind of, you know, as you flip through, you can end up with two bad sides uh, back to back. And that bothers me. There's also the fact that these pages are stuck in there and if I want to, let's say if someone's interested in one of my paintings, I can't really pull them out of here. So recently I was talking about a different kind of binding system which uses these types of discs. Now this one has a little heart going through it, it's cute and all, but usually they're kind of like flat. And for this kind of system you need the special punch for this. So here is the Lavenger Leverage Punch, which works for a disc binding system. And I was fortunate enough to receive this as a gift, so I'm very grateful. And this one here in particular, it's super hefty and it goes through a lot of papers or thicker paper, which is one of the um, characteristics that I was looking for when I was looking for a punch for this kind of uh, binding system. Now, before I go ahead and bind my book, I need to cut uh, these papers to size and um, I only have this much left so I need more and to save money what I usually do is buy my watercolor papers in larger sheets. This one came in a pad. Uh, it's 30 sheets of 18 inches by 24 inches and I got this on sale. Uh, it was 60% off I believe at Michael's last year actually. And so I'm going to show you first how I cut my paper. Okay, so because I know that my paper measures 24 inches across by 18 tall, I'm going to take my T ruler and place it flush against the right side right here. This is the glue line. So I'd rather have it against that straight edge right there. Make sure that it's flush against this. And I'm going to find the center mark this way, which is 12 inches because this measures 24. So I'm just going to put a little tick mark here. Then I'm going to flip my ruler around and make it stop at the edge on top here. Find my mark, which is right here. So once I know that it's very flush, I'm going to trace a line. And before I remove my ruler, I'm going to find the center this way. So this measure is 18 inches, so halfway point is 9. I'm going to put another tick mark over there. I'm going to place my ruler again against this side, find my mark, make sure that it's flush against that edge, and trace another line. I have a self-healing cutting mat which is quite old. I know it's bright pink but it's also magnetic and it comes with a magnetic ruler. This is from We Are Memory Keepers. I'm sure they still make something equivalent probably in a different color. I'm going to place it right underneath the um, vertical line because that's the only cut by hand that I'm going to do. I'm going to place that magnetic ruler right on top and I'm going to use a craft knife and just run that along that ruler. Now, of course, it does help if you have a sharp hobby blade. You can use a regular ruler and a pair of scissors, of course, but it does cut down on time when you're using something like this. So now I'm going to detach that portion as well. Um, I'm sure that some of you are probably thinking why can't you just cut like several sheets at a time instead of putting a cutting mat underneath just put the ruler and just like slice away well the reason is I, I'd rather have full sheets still in my inventory just in case I need them I never know how many pages I'm gonna cut ahead of time I do cut like several but I don't want to lose the, the the availability of that big sheet um, and also I've noticed that if you cut several pages at a time because I, I have <laughs> tried it it kind of cuts little slivers 
you know from the bottom ones and it just becomes annoying and I don't know I just like to do it one sheet at a time it's not such a big deal after all now I have to cut these two in half again I have a paper trimmer and again you can use scissors uh, but this one cuts 12 inches in length so sheets of 12 inches long so I'm just going to place my paper right here I have that mark or that line that I traced so I'm going to put that in the gutter or the cutting gutter and just cut So now I have four sheets of 12 by 9, which is actually a watercolor paper standard size. If you buy your watercolor papers in pads, you know that 9 by 12 is a regular format. However, it's not a standard size for framing, which bothers me. <laughs> they should get their act together, really. People talk to each other, companies, do something. So if you want to frame a 9 by 12, you kind of have to frame it you kind of have to order like a custom framing job which is unfortunate but anyways so <laughs> um, my paper the papers that I use for my journals are actually six by nine so I'm going to take each of these four pieces again and cut them on the long edge at the six inch mark there you go so now I have eight pieces that measure six by nine and those eight pieces come from a full sheet so I have several sheets to cut now, I'm going to do that and then we'll get to binding. Alright, time to bind. Okay, so I have carefully <coughs> read the instructions, that little pamphlet that comes with the punch and uh, of course this is in the lock position so all I have to do is press down here and there's a red lever right there or a red switch I just have to push it down and then it opens there is also here a guide to choose the size of paper that you want and either I'm really dumb or <laughs> I didn't catch what they were saying, but essentially, if you have a punch like this and you're stuck, uh, don't ever put your fingers around here or here. <laughs> but there's um, a paper guide here. You have to push and then play with this little kind of like pull, and you can choose the size of paper. The size of paper will appear here, right here. And then once you uh, get it to the right, size of your paper that you're going to punch you just release and it will lock into place this is for the they call those chads uh, it's for t the that's where the little remnants or the punched um, pieces will fall into and you just have to empty that once in a while and that's basically it so first of all I want to test out the watercolor paper and this is a piece that I cut wrong so I'm going to use this um, now of course I have to play with the dimension here um, because I want to bind my book on the short edge so I'm just going to first see how well it punches through watercolor paper <laughs> like butter <laughs> I seriously I didn't have to put a lot of effort into this and essentially you would insert the pages right in here all right so that's how that works so it seems that um, I was able to go up to 11 regular coffee paper and not 15 but regardless I mean it still punches quite a lot of paper at a time of course watercolor paper I would just do like two at a time I want to test it out also on some um, cardboard that I have here this is not book binding board it's not that thick so I'm gonna try this hmm I'm not sure I'm all the way to the edge ah. yeah it looks like the guide at the letter size will work in my favor because that's not bad I mean this side is a little bit smaller than that side but I mean honestly it's not a big deal so let me just do one here I 
I'm still doubting whether I'm all the way out <laughs> or in, I want to say. Yeah, that works, right? It's not bad. Awesome. Let's try two pieces at one time. Ooh, we're getting dangerous here. We're adventurous. All right. Yep, still good. That's so awesome. Wow. I'm very happy. Uh, three might be pushing it, I think, but I'm still going to try. Yeah, no, I don't want to do three. I'm going to do two at a time. Wow. Well, that took no time at all. So, I'm going to lock this and empty that thing here. This is kind of like a release door. Uh, the pieces are stuck inside here. So you just have to kind of like shake the punch to get all of these things out. And there you go. Oh, look at that. Wow. You're probably not going to see my hand through this, but I can tell. Look at this. This is like all straight and stuff. Ooh, I like that. To finish off my book, I covered two uh, very thin cardboard, I guess it's cardstock, uh, with patterned paper. And I thought that this patterned paper would be awesome with my rose gold discs. So I'm just going to punch those out. I've cut them the same size as my papers, of course. Oh, I should have done one upside. Oh, it's okay. There we go. So this is going to be the back side, the front side. I also sanded the edges down because there's nothing that bothers me most than having some crink, like curled up paper. <laughs> so there we go. So this is ready to be bound. Oh no. Yeah. I messed this one up. <laughs> the back cover I should have punched upside down because yeah, because one side is is kind of like an offset. They're not equal. I don't have that paper anymore. <laughs> I wonder if it's going to make a huge difference if I if I redo this the right way. Let's see. I just don't want the back cover to wiggle and it's probably Oh no, I think I'll be okay. Oh. That was very lucky. All right. So, let's start this. I'll make sure that all of my hearts are not really facing the right way. That's pretty cool. I'm guessing the first few pages are a little bit awkward because the discs tend to wobble a bit. I love it. The back cover is, like I said, a little bit offset because of my mistake, but it looks like it's going to hold. Now, I um, I went online and I looked up the um, 
the me and my big ideas ring uh, people are saying that the outside like this the rim of the discs are slightly larger than the regular ones because I know Levenger uh, sells beautiful rings I mean uh, or discs some of them are like absolutely gorgeous like mother of pearl and all that stuff but the even the regular ones that you can buy you can find online at Amazon or whatever the rim is slightly rounder and maybe a tad smaller so there's less damage to your paper and I know that me and my big ideas sell their own punch but the great thing about having that punch that I have is that it fits all the rings like pretty much all the manufacturers so I'm happy with this the reason why I chose a top binding as opposed to a side binding is because if I want to use this uh, this journal and just um, paint without having to remove the page then I don't have that ring on the right side or the left side to deal with um, I think it's it's better suited for my needs and if I do want to let's say I I know I'm gonna use a lot of water on that page I can just remove it uh, gently I guess <laughs> and tape it to a board work on it and when the painting is finished I can just pop it back into place the pages measure six by nine and that's because I was lazy and I just cut everything in half I didn't want to waste paper right off the bat but uh, for framing wise I know that there are standard sizes and the one that would probably fit this page is a five by seven opening so what I would do when I do my painting is probably bring it down lower um, and then allow for maybe like a quarter of an inch so maybe or even like work in a five and a half by seven and a half uh, area so if I tape this to a board then I will tape my work accordingly and that's that so that way if I want to frame any of my paintings then I won't have to pay for custom framing which is very expensive we all know that I'm so happy with this oh my goodness so now I have two beautiful books ah this one's full this one is gonna get full pretty soon I want to thank you my awesome angel <laughs> you know who you are um, and no it's nobody from Lavender so uh, this video was not sponsored I'm not trying to push <laughs> the punch on on you either it's pretty expensive uh, but I know that I've talked about this binding system in previous videos and some of you were interested so there you go so now now you saw the full process of doing that so if you're lucky enough to get that punch and you want to take advantage of specials on large watercolor papers then I think this can work to your advantage but anyways thank you so much for watching I'm very excited to start painting in this <laughs> if you have any questions or comments please feel free to leave them below also I want to say a huge thank you to my awesome patrons for supporting my art over at patreon have a super fun and creative day and I will see you tomorrow